Hello, this is Tom Klopper and welcome to the second video, part B, where we're going to uh, implement the bias -T network using microstrip transmission lines. Essentially, we're going to be setting up this schematic and designing our bias -T network using microstrip lines. So what we're going to do is go back to our project in HFSS, or in the uh, electronic desktop, and what we're going to do is we have, this is our ideal bias -T network where we have our high impedance first stub, here's our 50 ohm second stub and our 50 ohm third stub, and we're going to try to do this in microstrip. So what we're going to do is click on bias -T, go back to desktop and say a new circuit. Again, we're going to keep on selecting the Oshpark uh, substrate definition, and we're going to rename this to something appropriate, which is B underscore microstrip. Wow, I can't spell microstrip bias T. And here we have our FR4 substrate definition. And we're going to go ahead and uh, put together the microstrip lines. First, what we do is go to view schematic and put down a couple of ports like we normally would. Just zoom in. We have to have, so we go to distributed microstrip, and here's all the subfolders that have the components. So we're first going to add uh, a microstrip transmission line at port one as the kind of lead in, and then we'll put one at port two as well. And then let me rotate here because we're going to put one down there as well. Now, in order to connect these together, we actually have to have a T junction. We can't just we can't just connect them together like we have here. It's just a, a virtual node. In Microstrip, we actually have to put an element there, and that's called a Microstrip T, where the reference planes are at the edges. So I click that, and let's just go ahead and move these closer. And we have to, of course, put another T here. I'm going to have the T going off to the left. It's kind of arbitrary, but that's the way we're going to do it. And then finally, we need to put uh, two open stubs, so open-ended lines, and then use this. So we're going to put one here and one here. They're both 50 ohm lines. And of course, we're going to move these around so we can see what's going on. Okay. And now we have to connect them together. <clears throat> and then we essentially have uh, created the microstrip version of the bias T. But now we have to put some parameters next to it. To do this, since we're in microstrip, let me just control D, uh, click on the project, right click, come down here to TRL microstrip single. And this brings up for the FR4 substrate, a little calculator. And it, it automatically fills in the values for the substrate. So we're going to design a 50 ohm line that's 90 degrees at 3 gigahertz. And we're going to express that in mils, synthesize. And it says that we need a 51.8 mil wide trace. That's the top trace. And uh, it needs to be 530 mils long to achieve 90 degrees at 3 gigahertz. So you go ahead and write this information down. And we also need a 100 ohm line. That's going to be our first stub. And that's going to be 9.6 mils wide at uh, 570 mils long for 90 degrees at 3 gigahertz. So now that we have that information, let's go ahead and populate our elements. We're going to double click. And again, I'm going, to param I'm going to parameterize everything. So this one I'm going to call W50 for a 50 ohm uh, line width. And we said that was 51.8 mils. And I'm going to call this a physical, they call P, I guess, for physical difference, a P of port one. And arbitrarily, just going to call this one 500 mils long, a half an inch. Uh, we're going to do the same here. So this will be a W50 for a 50 ohm lead in, a P of port two. Again, make this arbitrarily 500 mils to begin with. And then this guy. Uh, is going to be our 
um, stub 1, so it's W of stub 1, and we said that was 9.6 mils. And then it'll have a length of P of stub 1, and we said for 9.6 that would be 570 mil. Okay. And now that we have these three defined, we can define the, the T element. So uh, port 1 of the T goes to a, a W50, so it's W50 length. Port 2 goes to a W50 as well, as far as the width. And then this guy goes to, port 3 goes to W stub. And what you're defining here is essentially the width of these each three connections for this T. And it'll create an element that um, supports that. So we have this defined. Uh, this is going to be a, a 50 ohm line um, stub. So we're going to call this one W stub 2, with the width of stub 2. And we're going to make that 51.8 mil. And it'll have a length P of stub 2. And we said 530 mil for a, um, a 50 ohm quarter wavelength stub at 3 gigahertz. And we're going to put one down here. We're going to call this one W of stub 3. Again, 50, 51.8 mil wide. And this one's going to be P of stub 3. P of stub 3. And this one's going to be, again, 530 mil long. And if we look at over here, all the properties um, that we have defined with our variables show up in this little box, which is kind of nice. So we can kind of double check. So we have uh, 50 ohm uh, traces leading into our bias T network. They're each 500 mils long. Uh, this first stub is going to be 9.6 mils of 570 mils long. Again, that's we're anticipating that to be 100 ohms. We have a, a T here. Oh, we got to define the T. So that means uh, one goes to W stub one. Uh, 2 goes to W stub 3, and then 3 goes to W stub 2. So again, we're double checking everything, make sure it makes sense. So we have the element W stub 2 is 51 at 40, 530 long, and this is 51.8 at 530. Okay, so now we have essentially a microstrip version of our ideal stub. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Analyze, we're going to go ahead and add a Nexus solution set up. It automatically puts the same one that we want there, which is great. And let's go ahead and analyze. <clears throat> I guess we can close this for now. And results, right click, create standard report. Let's look at S11, let's look at S21. Add trace. Let's make S21 here over there. Um, so let's go ahead and change this. So I'm going to make this y axis scaling. Let's go ahead and just make this 50 and this guy minus 10. Okay, great. So our first uh, go around at 3 gigahertz looks pretty good. So we're getting a little bit of insertion loss due to obviously material losses. This is FR4. Remember, it's pretty lossy material. But the return loss looks pretty good at 3 gigahertz. Let's go ahead and put some markers here. Just We can just define a band. I don't know what band we want, but let's say 2.8. We'll, we'll do uh, 3 and we'll do uh, 3.2. Then down here we'll do the same thing. We'll go um, 2.8. 3 and 3.2. Um, if it didn't come out quite right, let's see, 2.3, 3.2.8, 2.9. 2 so double click on this and you can actually type it in if it didn't quite work out right. And you can also verify, yes, this is going to S11 as opposed to S21. So you can verify the actual trace that the marker is on. So we've defined our markers. And this is kind of our initial uh, crack at this. One of the reasons why you want to do this in in the Microsoft schematic in the Microsoft in the circuit schematic is because the the simulations occur very quickly and you can do a lot of iterations real time before we move this off into HFSS. So let's go ahead and uh, try to even make it even better. So I'm going to essentially click on this, right click, and go D 
design properties and this shows you all of the variables that you define and their values click on optimization design of experiments and so we're going to vary uh, two of the lengths we're going to vary this first stub length which is port stub one p stub one and then we're going to vary this stub here the one that makes this a short and that is p stub two and we're going to change the min and max values to 450 to let's say 650 make it kind of broad 450 to 650 and what this is saying is when we do an optimization you're allowing it to vary p stub one and p stub two between these two min and max values so you define that part of it and now we have to go and define the the goal so you click on optometrics right click add optimization set up a calculation and we're going to optimize s21 or the insertion loss and we're going to do that we click on here and say edit we can do this over a range if you like but we're going to actually do it at one frequency particularly we're going to do it right at three gigahertz okay and what we're going to tell it is to maximize the numeric value at three gigahertz so that's going to be our optimization goal and so let's go ahead and uh, look at our results let's look at the parameters and watch this kind of go real time so we're clicking on optometrics and say analyze and we're going to see we're going to see what happens real time as it kind of fine tunes and tries to find the optimum value for those two uh, ports as it kind of goes around you can see it kind of searching and searching and trying to find the optimum spot for maximizing s21 and it's already done so we go back to here and I realize that I spelled microstrip wrong micro <clears throat> and um, go back to our schematic and you can see it did change it it went from 570 to 460 and the other one from 530 to 550 so this doesn't make too much this doesn't really this does it makes sense because you've added some electrical length of line with these adding these two elements so by nature this stub should be a little bit smaller so I think that's about it for the schematic so you're kind of done your first crack at the design let's take a look at what it looks like um, from a layout perspective let me go ahead and save this to do that you're already in the schematic view so click on layout and this will take you over to what the layout looks like <clears throat> and you hit control M and you can see the whole thing now I'm going to rotate this so it kind of looks like what it is on the, on the page it doesn't really matter too much but there it is so that's the design here's here's the the transmission line through your s21 here are your ports you can just move them out of the way they don't really do anything let's get them out of, out of the way and then um, here's the the hundred ohm lead-in here's the stub that makes this point ground and then here's your stub that goes from ground to open so you essentially attach your power supply right here and you can put a DC bias voltage on your microstrip trace. So that is kind of concludes the design of the microstrip version of the bias T. Next, we're going to in the next video, we're going to try to move on to adding some some characteristics of this to make it more flexible to go into a printed circuit board. Thanks for watching.